Alright, today we're looking at KDE 4.5. Now, I, again, I realize KDE 4.5 came out a while back, but again, so for stability's sake, I think it's now it's a good time to have a look at it in depth. On the KDE release website, it says December updates stabilize KDE 4.5 further, and it goes through all the updates that they've made. Very, very good. So, here we are in KDE 4.5.4, which is the latest stable KDE release. And just as a side note, we're, we're running inside um, PC Linux OS. Let's talk about the look and feel. Now, the look and feel of KDE 4.5 is extremely modern, and I really like it. There are many, many, many wallpapers installed by default in the artwork packs that you can download through the repositories. It's a real testament to the excellent quality that these guys put into their artwork. Okay, let's have a look at system settings. System settings is basically a control panel where you can adjust everything to do with the user account. Some distributions handle this differently as far as root user settings and user level settings. In here you can configure things like your account details, desktop effects, workspace appearance, workspace settings, etc, etc. So for continuity's sake, I'm going to have a look in workspace appearance. And in here you can see the different window decorations. Comes with quite a few actually. The desktop theme, which by default is Air. Very nice. Air for netbooks, Glass, Glassified, which is the one that comes default with PC Linux OS. Again, very nice one. There we go. It's a much sharper, it's a much sharper look. And oxygen, which is basically a dark, a dark version of air, which again is also very nice. So we'll go back to air as the default. You can also configure the splash screen, which I have done. And you can also configure things such as network settings and hardware, as in device actions. When you plug something in, what happens? That type of thing. You've got a font installer, which is very helpful. Login screen and you've also got workspace configuration which lets you switch to the netbook interface. Now the netbook interface is a very important part of KDE 4.5. It's amazing how much work that these people have put into the netbook side of things. From inside here you can search and launch all your different applications and they put your favorite applications up on the top here. For instance, say I want to search for KWord. There it is. No worries at all. Say I want to search for Caden Live. There it is. No worries at all. Say I want to search for music. If I can spell it right. There we go. And it brings up my music players. Very nice. Very handy indeed. Seven running apps. It displays all the applications you're running. And you've got your, you've got your system tray. And you've got your page pages, which is page one for your different news feeds, weather forecasts, knowledge base, you name it, it is a beautiful interface and I think it would really make those Mac fanboys stand up and listen when, when you pull out this on your touchscreen, on your touchscreen tablet, etc. Now basically everything with KDE is based on plasmoids or widgets if you will. You can add any widgets you want and just fill up the screen with all your favorite stuff. There we go, look at that. Now these widgets are scalable and rotatable, which makes it very, very customizable. Now let's talk about some applications. By default, KDE is not just a desktop experience, it is also the applications that are installed with it. Anything that has a K in front of it in these menus is basically a KDE application. Let me show you. So first, let's have a look at some Office apps. Now. KDE comes with KOffice. It doesn't always come with it, but it's always packaged in the repo. So if you want to search for it and download it, it's the KOffice suite. Now KOffice comes with KWord, which is this one here. Great word processor. And KSpread, which is a spreadsheet editor. They also It also comes with an email client and a presentation editor, a vector graphics editor, and all sorts of other cool stuff. Also the graphics side of KDE is not lacking at all. They have Critter, which is their raster-based graphics program, a lot like GIMP in a sense, but it's fully featured. It has, all this, it has all the stuff that you'd expect from a graphics editor. Very, very handy, and quite honestly, it's quite professional.
It also comes with Gwenview, which is their default photo manager. It's quite lightweight, it doesn't really get in your way too much, and it's easy to understand. Anytime you open up an image, you open up Gwenview. It saves where you've been, makes it easier to access next time. And also then they've got their video player, which is the Dragon Player. Now, the Dragon Player, I think, is becoming the default on most KDE installs now. And I think it used to be Caffeine, but I think it's slowly being phased out towards Dragon Player. So very good, very, very usable, very handy. Overall, I'm very impressed with KDE 4.5. They've come a long way as far as usability, performance, stability, and it just looks awesome. It competes easily with something like Windows 7 or OS 10, and it really provides users with something they can take to their friends and not feel like an absolute nerd for running Linux. So I'm very impressed with KDE 4.6 around the corner. My only suggestions would be that the compositing manager for the Windows needs to get a little bit quicker. The 3D effects are a bit sluggish, but I've already found out that they are working on that for future releases of KDE, so I'm looking forward to them getting that under control. Otherwise, my only other suggestion would be taking a leaf from the GNOME book and trying to simplify a few things. KDE has